cross-cultural business. This chapter describes culture in the context of international business, explaining how culture affects international business practices and competitiveness, and presents two methods of classifying cultures. This chapter objectives are to describe culture and explain the significance of national culture and subcultures. Identify the components of culture and describe their impact on international business. Describe cultural change and explain how companies and culture affect each other. Explain how the physical environment and technology influence culture. Describe two frameworks used to classify cultures and explain their practical use. What is culture? Culture is the set of values, beliefs, rules, and institutions held by a specific group of people. Main components include aesthetics, values and attitudes, manners and customs, social structure, religion, personal communication, education, and physical and material environments. Before we learn about the individual components of culture, let's look at one important concept that should be discouraged and one that should be fostered. Ethnocentricity. Ethnocentricity is the belief that one's own ethnic group or culture is superior to that of others. It causes people to view other cultures in terms of their own and overlook beneficial aspects of other cultures. Ethnocentricity can undermine business projects when employees are insensitive to cultural nuances. Cultural literacy. Managers working directly in international business should develop cultural literacy, which is detailed knowledge about a culture that enables a person to function effectively within it. Cultural literacy brings a company closer to customer needs and improves competitiveness. Creating a global mindset requires cultural adaptability, bridging the gap that can emerge between theory and practice when Western management ideas are applied in Eastern cultures, building global mentality and flexibility. National culture. Nation states support and promote the concept of a national culture by building museums and monuments to preserve the legacies of important events and people. Nation states intervene to help preserve the national cultures. Companies get involved in supporting culture in part for the public relations benefit. Subculture. A subculture is a group of people who share a unique way of life within a larger dominant culture. It can differ from the dominant culture in language, ways, lifestyle, values, attitudes, and so on. Companies must be mindful of subcultures when formulating business strategies. For example, China has 50 ethnic groups. Decisions regarding product design, packaging, and advertising must consider distinct cultures. Subcultures also can extend beyond national borders. Why should business people try to avoid ethnocentricity and develop cultural literacy? We've learned that ethnocentricity distorts one's views of other cultures and causes them to overlook important human and environmental differences among cultures. Cultural literacy improves the ability of managers to manage employees, develop and market products, and conduct negotiations in local markets. Components of culture. Culture includes what people consider beautiful and tasteful, their underlying beliefs, their traditional habits, and how they relate to one another and their surroundings. Aesthetics. Aesthetics is what a culture considers to be in good taste in the arts, the imagery evoked by certain expressions, 
and the symbolism of colors. Effective appropriate colors for advertising, product packaging, and even work uniforms can enhance success. Blunders can result from selecting inappropriate colors in symbols for advertising, product packaging, and architecture. Music is deeply cultural and must be considered in promotions, also an important consideration in marketing over the internet. Values and attitudes. Values are ideas, beliefs, and customs to which people are emotionally attached. They affect work ethic and desire for material possessions. Some cultures value leisure, others hard work. Attitudes are positive or negative evaluations, feelings, and tendencies that individuals elbow toward objects and concepts. They are learned from role models and from within a cultural context. Attitudes are more flexible than values. Attitudes toward time. Latin American and Mediterranean cultures are casual about time. People in Japan and the United States arrive promptly for meetings and keep tight schedules. Americans strive toward workplace efficiency and may leave work early if their work is done because they value individual results. Japanese look busy even when business is slow to demonstrate dedication, an attitude ground in cohesion, loyalty, and harmony. Attitudes toward work. Some cultures have a strong work ethic. Others stress a balanced space in work and leisure. For example, the slogans work to live or live to work. Many European nations are trying to foster an entrepreneurial spirit to achieve the job growth realized in the United States. Attitudes toward cultural change. A cultural trait is anything that represents a culture's way of life, including gestures, material objects, traditions, and concepts. Cultural diffusion is the process whereby cultural traits spread from one culture to another. Globalization and technology are increasing the pace of cultural diffusion and change. Cultural imperialism is the replacement of one culture's traditions for heroes and artifacts with substitute from another. Culture can force companies to adjust business policies and practices, such as using situational management. Rapid cultural diffusion and increased human interaction across borders cause cultures to converge. Convergence is taking place in some market segments for some products. Manners and customs. It is important to understand manners and customs to avoid mistakes abroad. In-depth knowledge improves the abilities of managers. Manners are appropriate ways of behaving, speaking, and dressing in a culture. Customs are habits or ways of behaving in specific circumstances that are passed down through generation and culture. Customs define appropriate habits or behaviors in specific situations. Four customs are behaviors dating by generations practiced within a homogeneous group of people. A popular custom is behavior practiced by a heterogeneous group or by several groups. Example, the bureau jeans, the burgers and fries. Although giving token gifts to business and government associates is customary, the proper type of gifts varies. Cultures differ in the legal and ethical rules regarding bribery. The U.S. Foreign Corp Practices Act prohibits companies from giving large gifts to win business favors. It applies to U.S. firms operating at home and abroad. Now take a few seconds to recall what you've learned in the previous slides and try to answer this question. The right answer is manners. Social structure. 
Social structure embodies a culture's fundamental organization, including groups and institutions, social positions and relationships, and resource distribution. Social group associations. A social group is a coalition of two or more people who identify and interact with one another. Social groups contribute to identity and self-image. Two groups that play especially important roles in affecting business activities everywhere are family and gender. There are two different types of family groups, the nuclear family and the extended family. Nuclear family consists of immediate relatives, including parents, brothers, and sisters. It prevails in Australia, Canada, United States, and in Europe. The extended family includes grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, and relatives through marriage. It's more important in Asia, Middle East, North Africa, and Latin America. Gender. The gender refers to socially learned traits associated with and expected of men or women. Sociologists regard gender as a category, people who share some status. Countries vary regarding gender equality at work. Another important aspect of social structure is social status. Social stratification is a process of ranking people into social layers according to family heritage, income, and occupation. The top layer, royalty, government officials, and business leaders. In the middle layer, we have the scientists, medical doctors, and others with a university education. In the bottom layer, we have manual and clerical workers with vocational training or secondary school educations. Rankings can and do change over time. Social mobility. Social mobility is the ease with which individuals can move up or down a cultural social ladder. A caste system is a system of social stratification in which people are born into a social ranking with no opportunity for social mobility. A class system is a system of social stratification in which personal ability and actions decide status and mobility. Highly class conscious cultures can offer less mobility but experience more class conflict. Religion. Human values often derive from religious beliefs. Different religions take different views of work, savings, and material goods. Beliefs influence competitiveness, economic development, and business strategies. Christianity. Founded in Palestine 2,000 years ago, among Jews who believe that Jesus of Nazareth was the Messiah. With 2 billion followers, it is the world's single largest religion. More than 300 denominations, but most are Roman Catholic, Protestant, or Eastern Orthodox. Roman Catholics are to refrain from placing materialism above God and people. Protestants believe that salvation comes from faith in God and that hard work gives glory to God. Christian organizations sometimes get involved in social causes that affect business policy. Islam Islam was founded by Muhammad in 600 AD in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, the holy city of Islam. It is the world's second largest religion with 1.3 billion adherents. The word Islam means submission to Allah and Muslim means one who submits to Allah. Religion strongly affects the goods and services acceptable to Muslim consumers. Example, alcohol, pork, interest in money. Hinduism, founded 4,000 years ago in present day India, where more than 90% of its nearly 900 million adherents live. Some say it is a way of life rather than a religion. 
caste system is integral to the Hindu faith. Hindus believe in reincarnation, which is rebirth of the human soul at the time of death. They do not eat or willfully harm living creatures as they may be reincarnated human souls. Cows considered sacred animals, so eating beef is not allowed. As a consequence, McDonald's replaced beef with lamb. Buddhism Founded 2,600 years ago in India by a Hindu prince named Siddhartha Gautama. Buddhism has about 380 million followers, mostly in Asia, China, Tibet, Korea, Japan, Vietnam, and Thailand. Buddhism promotes a life centered on spiritual rather than worldly matters. Buddhists seek nirvana, which means escape for reincarnation through charity, modesty, compassion for others, restraint from violence, and general self-control. Confucianism. Confucianism was founded 2,500 years ago by an exiled politician and philosopher Confucius. China is the home to most of the 225 million followers on Confucianism. Confucian thought is ingrained in the cultures of Japan, South Korea, and nation with large numbers of ethnic Chinese, including Singapore. South Korean business practice reflects Confucian thought in its rigid organizational structure and reverence for authority. Example, the Korean style management in overseas subsidiaries. For centuries, people despised merchants because earning money violated Confucian belief. As a result, many Chinese moved to Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand to do business. Judaism Judaism was founded more than 3,000 years ago and has roughly 18 million followers worldwide. It was the first religion to believe in one God. Orthodox Jews, which is the fully observant, make up 12% of Israel and constitute an increasingly important economic segment. Important observances are Watch Ashana, which is the Jewish New Year, Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement, the Passover, which is the Exodus from Egypt, and Hanukkah, a victory over the Syrians. Employers must be aware of Jewish holiday. Because Sabbath lasts from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday, work schedules might need adjustment. Marketers must take into consideration foods banned among observant Jews. For example, the pork and the selfish prohibited, meat stored and served separately from milk and kosher foods. Shinto, meaning way of the gods, Shinto arose as the native religion of the Japanese. It teaches sincere and ethical behavior, loyalty, and respect toward others and enjoyment of life. Shinto claims about 4 million strict adherents in Japan. Shinto beliefs are reflected in the workplace through lifetime environment, although this is waning today, and the traditional trust extended between firms and customers. Japanese competitiveness in world markets has benefited from loyal workforces, low employee turnover, and good labor management cooperation. Now let's talk about personal communication. Every culture has a communication system to convey thoughts, feelings, knowledge, and information through speech, writing, and actions. A culture's spoken and body language can help explain people's thoughts and behaviors. Spoken and written language. Linguistically different segments of a population are often culturally, socially, and politically distinct. Companies have made language blunders in their international business dealings. A lingua franca is a third or link language that is understood by two parties who speak different languages. Some languages are dying out, whereas some languages are growing, including Mandarin, 
Spanish and English. Now the body language. Body language is communicated through unspoken cues, including hand gestures, facial expressions, physical greetings, eye contact, and the manipulation of personal space. Body language communicates information and feelings and differs among cultures. Most of body language is subtle and takes time to interpret. Proximity is an element of body language. Standing too close may invade personal space and appear aggressive. Now, check yourself how well you understand the topic at hand by answering this question. How does an understanding of the spoken, written, and body language in a market abroad contribute to business success? Knowledge of the culture's spoken and written language give international managers insight into why people think and act the way they do. Education. Education passes on traditions, customs, and values. Cultures educate young people through schooling, parenting, religious teachings, and group memberships. Families and other groups provide informal instruction about customs and how to socialize with others. Two important topics in education are education level and brain drain. Education level. Excellent basic education attract high-wage industries that invest in training and increase productivity. Skilled, well-educated workforce attracts high-paying jobs. A poorly educated one attracts low-paying jobs. Newly industrialized economies in Asia owe much of their economic development to solid education systems. Now the brain drain phenomenon. The brain drain is the departure of highly educated people from one profession, geographic region, or nation to another. The reverse brain drain, partly, is the process when professionals return to their homelands. This table provides a list of illiteracy rates of selected countries which is used by managers in searching for untapped markets or new factory locations. Physical and material culture. This heavily influences a culture's development and pace of change. Two aspects of the physical environment are topography and climate. Topography are all physical features that characterize the surface of a geographic region. Cultures isolated by impassable mountain or large bodies of water are less exposed to the cultural traits of others and change slowly. Topography impacts product needs and also impacts personal communication. Climate affects where people settle and directs system of distribution. It plays a large role in lifestyle, clothing, and work habits such as organizing production schedules for idle machines. Material culture includes all technology a culture uses to manufacture goods and product services and can measure a culture's technological advancement. A firm enters a market under one or two conditions. The demand for its products has developed or the market is capable of supporting its production operations. Changes in material culture can change other aspects of culture. Many nations display uneven levels of material culture across geography, markets, and industries. Classifying cultures. People in different cultures respond differently in similar business situations. Two ways to classify cultures based on characteristics such as values, attitudes, and social structure. We first take a detailed look of the Clockhorn Stroudberg firm. 
The Klokhun Stradbert framework compels cultures along six dimensions by asking the following questions. Question one, do people believe that their environment controls them, that they control the environment, or that they are part of nature? Question two, do people focus on past events, on the present, or on the future implication of their actions? Question three, are people easily controlled and not to be trusted? Or can they be trusted to act freely and responsibly? Question four, do people desire accomplishment in life, carefree lives, or spiritual and contemplative lives? Question five, do people believe that individuals or groups are responsible for each person's welfare? Question six, do people prefer to conduct most activities in private or in public? We can briefly apply the Cloco and Stored Bay framework to the Japanese culture by providing answers to each of these six questions. First, Japanese believe in a delicate balance between people and environment that must be maintained. Second, Japanese culture emphasizes the future. Third, Japanese culture treat people as quite trustworthy. Fourth, Japanese are accomplishment oriented for employers and work units. Fifth, Japanese culture emphasizes individual responsibility to the group and group responsibility to the individual. And sixth, the culture of Japan tends to be public. Hofstede Framework The Hofstede Framework grew from a study of more than 110,000 people working in IBM subsidiaries by Dutch psychologist Gid Hofstede. It developed five dimensions for examining cultures. Individualism versus collectivism. This dimension identifies the extent to which a culture emphasizes the individual versus the group. Individualist cultures value hard work, entrepreneurial risk-taking, and freedom to focus on personal goals. Collectivist cultures feel a strong association to groups, including family and work units. The goal is to maintain group harmony and work toward collectivity rather than personal goals. Power distance. Power distance identifies the degree to which a culture accepts social inequality among its people. Large power distance is characterized by inequality between superiors and subordinates. Organizations are hierarchical, with power derived from prestige, force, and inheritance. Small power distance means equality, with prestige and rewards equally shared between superiors and subordinates. Power derives from hard work and is considered more legitimate. This figure shows how various countries work according to the power distance and individualism versus collectivism dimensions. There's a tight grouping of nations within the five clusters plus Costa Rica. You can see the concentration of mostly African, Asian, Central and South American and Middle Eastern nations in quadrant one cultures with relatively larger power distance and lower individualism. By contrast, quadrants three and two comprise mostly the cultures of Australia and the nations of North America and Western Europe. This nation had the highest individualism scores and many had relatively smaller power distance scores. Uncertainty avoidance. Uncertainty avoidance identifies the extent to which a culture avoids uncertainty and ambiguity. Cultures with large uncertainty avoidance value security, place faith in strong systems of rules and procedures, have lower employee turnover, formal rules for employee behavior, and more difficulty implementing change. Low uncertainty avoidance cultures are more open to change and new ideas. 
Disfigure plots countries according to the power distance and uncertainty avoidance dimension. Quadrant 4 contains nations characterized by small uncertainty avoidance and small power distance, including Australia, Canada, Jamaica, the United States, and many Western European nations. Quadrant 2 contains many Asian, Central American, South American, and Middle Eastern nations, the nations having large power distance and large uncertainty avoidance indexes. Achievement versus nurturing. This dimension identifies the extent to which a culture emphasizes personal achievement and materialism versus relationships and quality of life. Cultures scoring higher are characterized by assertiveness and the accumulation of wealth and entrepreneurial drive. Cultures scoring low have relaxed lifestyle with more of a concern for others than material gain. Long-term orientation. Long-term orientation indicates a society's time perspective and an attitude of overcoming obstacle with time. It attempts to capture the differences between Eastern and Western cultures. Cultures scoring high, strong long-term orientation, value respect for tradition, thrift, perseverance, and a sense of personal shame. Cultures scoring low are characterized by individual stability and reputation, fulfilling social obligations, and reciprocation of greetings and gifts. Take a few seconds and recall what you've heard about the Ofsted framework and choose the appropriate word to answer this question. If you choose power distance, you are right. Cultures with small power distance tend to display greater equality and a more equal distribution of rewards. The bottom line for business. In this chapter, we discuss many of the cultural differences among nations that affect international business. We saw how problems can erupt from cultural misunderstandings and learned how companies can improve their performance with cultural literacy. Localizing business policies and practices can promote success. Understanding a people's values, beliefs, rules and institutions makes managers more effective at their jobs.